Yes, people, welcome. In this video, we are going to prepare potassium chloride by purifying it from a 50-50 salt mix. This presentation is presented by Nyan Chemistry, Mysterious Voice, Nyan Chan, et al. Point of God, Point Chemistry Society, yes. Anyway, the OTC sources of potassium chloride, most of it is this 50-50, 70-30, you know, these salts you can buy in the grocery store. <clears throat> Fertilizers are also another source, which is, I mean, that one's a lot easier. It's just mixed with a bit of red phosphorus and sulfur. I mean, you can just kind of filter that out. It's more straightforward than this. Dishwasher salts can be entirely potassium chloride. Diet salt is really the only thing that needs to be purified by crystallization. The other two sources can just be boiled down after you've filtered them if it needs to be filtered. Now, there are a few purification methods to separate sodium and potassium chloride. One is two-point fractional crystallization. You know, that's the classic. We already know about this with, with separating sodium chlorate from sodium chloride. It's the same thing, really. Second method is salting out, which involves dissolving more sodium chloride into the liquid at high temperature to push out all the potassium ions in, you know, into forming potassium chloride and it separating out as a solid, which is the method we're going to show in the video. And there's a reason why. You see, because of this curve, right, we have mutual solubilities where in order, if we were to just use the 50-50 salt and keep separating out by boiling it down the stuff we're going to get at the end is going to be not very good which is why we use potassium i mean sodium chloride to push them out such that we can break all of this you know of course at the end we cannot recover a hundred percent of the product because of this this graph right here eventually we will reach the other extreme i mean at that case just a two point fractional if you think it's worth it you know, <laughs> Minister's voice. So you probably already know why you're here. I've already explained it earlier. So we're here to separate potassium chloride from sodium chloride. However, unlike other methods, our aim is to get all of it or most of it. So I've already explained exactly how that works. Anyway, what we're doing is we're weighing how much potassium chloride or fucking diet salt we have. We have about 617 grams, which this says around 600 grams. I'm using this pot because, I mean, we don't really need any bakers for this. And this is some food grade chemistry. So everything here is completely fine. And I use this as a water bath. So all we really have to do is uh, boil this solution and stick it in the freezer. Now you can see this is still dissolving so once this is fully dissolved away the next thing we do is to put it in the freezer this is what you see in your classic method the very first you know iteration of this will be the classic method once you've fully dissolved everything we're gonna put it in this container and stuck it in the freezer we're using plastic to get nice large crystals Here's the solution. I'm going to put cling wrap over this to prevent evaporative losses which will cause sodium contamination in the product. I mean, there will be in the very end, but I mean, you want to minimize it. It is a lot while later, and we see we collected about this much potassium chloride from the sodium chloride, potassium chloride mix. Now you're probably wondering, what are we going to do now? We've got a lot of potassium chloride, but I'm pretty sure this ain't all of it. Of course, it ain't all of it. So you already know I explained that what we're going to do now is we're going to collect this liquid and we're going to add salt. When we add sodium chloride to this liquid, the, the solubility curve of sodium chloride is flat. So because it doesn't change, we'll be able to push out all the potassium ions from the solution theoretically. Of course, I don't expect a theoretical yield. I expect something like 80 is probably passing. Anything below that, sad. Next step we're going to do is we're going to just pour some regular sea salt into this for how much it doesn't fucking matter around that much should be good enough because what's gonna happen now is once the most of this gets dissolved we can then push out the potassium 
We only collect the potassium, not the sodium. As you can see, we are doing two things over here. We're preparing our next batch and we're drying our product. So we're going to dissolve most of this, but not all of it. And then we're going to put it back in the fridge for the next batch. This is a very different manner of crystallization. You know, usually you just continue to boil this down. But if you do that, you'll have no liquid left. And if you have no liquid left, you'll have nothing to push out left. And, you know, that kind of ruins the whole thing. But by having these sodium ions in there, just pretend they're like, it's like you keep cramming in more sodium. And obviously the only thing that's going to be coming out is the potassium ions. Eventually, though, even if the solubility curve of sodium chloride is very flat, you know, it, it's kind of a slight slope. So you will eventually get the other stuff coming out, but that's going to be like, you would have theoretically recovered all your potassium by then. Hey guys, it's that time again. You can see we got another yield of crystals. It's not as big as the last one, but that's to be expected. Here's our, we're going to reuse this exact salt. And we're going to throw our crystals there. So I put everything over here already. And I can only pull it twice because the third batch yielded no crystals. Anyway, let's see what our weight is. What is? 255. Okay, that's a 2. Stupid thing over here. 255, 256. It was 255 last time, so it's whatever. 3 grams for container, call that 250, fucking 3 or something. And that'd be about like 84, 85% yield, which is, as I said, 70 would be your passing. Or was it 80? I don't know. Whatever I said, this is a pretty good, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not 100% pure. But it is a hell of a lot better than 50% pure. Wait, guys, there's actually crystals under here. You know, I thought there was nothing. I'd given up on it, but there is stuff in here. You know what I'm going to do? I've gotten some more potassium out, even though I record 85%. This might just be, I don't think this is a remaining yield, but what I'm going to do is I was going to get this liquid, test it with some sodium perchlorate to see if it, you know, had more potassium in it. I go open up the freezer and I see more potassium in it. I'm like, shit. So now I'm going to test this liquid still though. Eh, I'll be back when I, sh when I separated these crystals out. So here's our potassium chloride. Look at that. These are huge crystals. And this was the very last pull. I thought there was no more in there. Or stuck in there forever. And here's the remainder of the solution, which I will test with sodium perchlorate in a little bit. Sad to say, after testing with sodium perchlorate, these are indeed just sodium chloride crystals. But they're very unusual ones. I never knew they could form these like more not square type of crystals. But yeah, sadly, ah, this will make for a good picture though. As for this, we're going to carry on. We're going to test to see how much potassium is actually left in here. Well, not exactly quantitatively because we've already know that there's at least 50 grams left in here but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put sodium perchlorate first up is our confirmed potassium chloride we just have to mix these two together you know let's be more generous about the amount add just a random amount come on dissolve Yep, as you can see, it turns cloudy, which shows that that's indeed potassium chloride over here. Now we're going to try others. Next, we have our sub-zero salt solution. Let's see. Sodium perchlorate power. Yep, this shows that there is still potassium in there. Although there is not much. That was a very concentrated solution of sodium uh, perchlorate so that should really have precipitated way more than this also look how almost clear it is there isn't much falling down and 
this shows that there's at least a small amount of potassium left in here. And I think majority of it has been salted out, but it's it's about this dilute. So I don't think we're recovering this without wasted time and effort. I'm going to actually go and pour the rest of this into here and watch more magic occur. Yep, as you can see, that was a more concentrated form of so there was a more concentrated solution of sodium perchlorate. So we are going to recover this, but not as potassium chloride. Let me go get more sodium perchlorate. Then I'll weigh this. This is like our 50 grams of lost yield. So I found about 100 grams of sodium perchlorate there. And, you know, that should be more. If we get what would equivalent be of what we've reported 100 grams, that means that our shit ain't that pure. So hopefully, hopefully it's not that bad. So I got about 99 grams of potassium perchlorate from the uh, remaining potassium. So <clears throat> uh, I'm going to figure out what that comes down to and I'll just mention it in text. Okay, so this is after the video now. As you see that there are remaining 50 grams of theoretical potassium chloride, assuming we you know, had it. But in, in our case, it wasn't 50 grams. It was a little more than 50 grams. So it was like... I think 54 or something, which means that this 85% is not actually 85, but more like 80 something percent. However, that is still really good. You know, we salted the remaining salt out with sodium perchlorate, and we got about 99 grams of potassium perchlorate, which gave us, as I mentioned, 53 grams of potassium chloride. But this potassium perchlorate was recrystallized, so. It could be like 54 or 55 grams. So there is an extra 5 grams overhead, which would mean that, yeah, as mentioned, this is not this is not pure. It's like, it would be around like 82 or 80% recovery. Let's just call it 80% to round it all out. You know, as mentioned, yep, that's exactly what happened. You know, the, you know, the improvement in this case would be like, after the third, during the third run, instead of instead of fractional crystal, I mean, instead of salting out, we could just do fractional crystallization in order to obtain more product, you know, and that will essentially allow us to collect a bit more, but just a bit more. Anyway, oh God, what's this button over here? Let's click it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me support your Patreon, yeah, so you can do my videos, yo.